So let's take an overview of solving quadratic equations now. We'll go into some of these finer points in more detail later, but just let's see how it's done and what we're trying to do in these types of problems. So in the case of a quadratic expression, an equation like we have here, x squared plus 5x equals negative 6, what we want to do is find solutions for this equation whereby a particular expression equals 0. So we have to get this into what we call standard form. You may have heard that earlier, and we'll review that again. But if we bring all the terms over to the left hand of the side, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And again, we can only solve quadratic equations in this manner that equal 0. That's part of what we're looking for. So let's take a look at what we do here. We're going to factor this down into its multiplicands. So in one case, we have x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now that equals 0. Now that's a little bit of a leap there, and we'll, we'll talk in more detail about how we do that. But essentially, this is reverse foiling. You may remember foiling first, inner, outer, last. That's how you go about multiplying the terms when you have two parenthetical expressions multiplied by each other. So when we're doing it by reverse, what we have to find are two numbers that sum to 5 and also multiply to 6, the sum. So in this case, positive 2 and positive 3 add up to 5. And positive 2 and positive 3 multiplied together yield 6. So this can get a little trickier, so you're going to have to get a lot of practice in this particular step. But after a while, it will become old hand. So in this case, what we're having here is the sum of two particular terms equals 0. So that means one of those two terms has to be 0 itself in order to have that as a product. So in this case, we can then say x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. Now solving each of these two equations, 4x gives us x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 3. In this case, we have two solutions. Now let's take a look at another quadratic equation that we're going to solve. You may remember before from the basics of quadratic equations that they can have two solutions or one or sometimes zero solutions. So let's take a look at a case that's different from the one we just saw. In this problem, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. So we're already in standard form and we're ready to go. We find that negative 5 and negative 5 are the two numbers by which the sum is negative 10 and the product is 25. Again, practice will make perfect on determining this step in factoring quadratic equations. But now we have negative 5 in both cases, so x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals 0. And like we did in the problem before, we see that one of those two terms must itself equal 0. So in this case, since they're the same, we know that the only case is that x minus 5 equals 0, so we can solve that x equals 5. And this quadratic equation has but one solution.